This is Castle Bay on the Isle of Barra. We arrived here on the Caledonian McBrain Ferry after a great sailing from Oban. Kissimmee Castle sits on a rocky island just off Castle Bay and was built around 1039. Since that time, Kissimmee Castle has been the stronghold of Clan McNeil. Sitting high on the hill to the west of Castle Bay, this war memorial is of a really spectacular design. The Isle of Vatasi is now the most southerly inhabited island of the Outer Hebrides, connected by a causeway built in 1991 to the Isle of Barra. It is approximately three miles by three, but is so deeply indented by the sea from the east and west that only a narrow strip of Macha prevents it from becoming two separate islands. There are literally hundreds of these snails found over the strip of Macha between East and West Vatasi Bay. We are now over the causeway and back on Barra. Barra is the second southernmost inhabited island of the Outer Hebrides. In 2011, the population of the island was 1,174. Long famed for its beauty, boasting beaches, hills, macha and moor, all in a small island, Bada is a very special place to visit. Barra's tiny airport near North Bay uses the beach as a runway. Planes can only land and take off at low tide, meaning that the timetable varies. Voted the world's most stunning landing spot, Barra's airport is the only airport in the world to have scheduled flights landing on the beach. Logan Air flies services to and from Glasgow. There are usually flights every day of the week in the summer. Eriskay is a stunning place. 
Eris Gay has a more recent claim to fame because of the story of the SS politician, which struck rocks just off the north shore of the island on the 5th of February 1941. Amongst the cargo en route to New York were 264,000 bottles of Scotch whisky. As soon as the crew were safe, the islanders set to work saving the cargo. It is thought that over 2,000 cases, or 24,000 bottles, were liberated before the authorities arrived on the scene. Compton Mackenzie's best-selling 1947 novel, Whiskey Galore, based on the story of the SS politician, or in the film it spawned. The causeway should help stem the decline of the island's population, which has fallen steadily from 421 in 1931 to 133 in 2001. South Eurist is the second largest of the islands in the Western Isles, measuring some 22 miles north to south and 7 miles east to west. These ruins are where the romantic heroine Flora MacDonald was born and spent part of her childhood. The geography is divided into a series of north-south strips, each running the length of the island. The west coast faces onto the Atlantic and compromises around 20 miles of beach, broken only by a headland at the halfway point. Behind the beach is a strip of maca, or grassy dune land. East again is a strip containing a vast number of small fresh water lockouts and a series of dispersed crofting townships. Then the ground rises to the mountains that run almost the whole length of the eastern side of South Uist. North Uist measures some 18 miles from east to west by 12 miles from north to south it, and has one of the most complex topographies you are likely to find anywhere. The eastern two-thirds of the islands are characterized by freshwater lockouts that seem to occupy more of the land than the land itself, plus deeply indenting sea lochs that reduce still further the proportion of green to blue. From this viewpoint on North Uist, we can see St Kilda on the horizon, some 40 miles away in the Atlantic Ocean. The western third of the island also has many lock-ins, but fewer than in the east, and here the complexities of the coastline are outlined by sandy beaches, maca, and white mudflats, rather than by the rocks of the east coast. The best and most accessible beaches in North Uist are in the north and northeast of the island. Harris is characterized by high mountains, deeply indented sea lochs, coastal islands and beautiful white beaches, punctuating the predominant grey rock and green heather. The southern part of Harris is less mountainous, with numerous unspoiled white sandy beaches, which are mainly on the west coast. Luskintyre and Skarista beaches are considered by many, and myself, to be the most spectacular. 
This area has some of the most breathtaking scenery in the Western Isles, and in fact the whole of Scotland. Harris is my personal paradise of Scotland. Enjoy the exuberant colours and imagine these being used in all the Harris tweeds, as that is how the tweed patterns are developed. Anyone who loves the far northwest of Scotland will be drawn to Harris. The character is different and distinct, but many of the elements are the same. The only difference being there are no trees on any of the islands. That is due to storms coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. This is the Isle of Lewis. The black houses at Nagaranan have seen the cycle of life through generations of crofting families. They were occupied until the early 1970s when the last few elderly residents moved to new accommodation that didn't need the annual maintenance of thatch and stonework. Lewis is a fairly flat island with many spectacular sandy beaches, a rugged coastline and a landscape that is worth investigating by detouring down all the little roads you find. Unfortunately we had a change in the weather and I have had to revert to photos from a previous trip to end the film. We visit the world-renowned Callanish Stones. This is the most northerly point of the island at Port Ness and the beautiful clear waters are to be admired. Then we see the wonderful beaches down the east coast of Lewis. Arriving in Stornham Way, where we sadly finish our wonderful trip to the fabulous islands of the Outer Hebrides. <laughs>